cultural heritage is the legacy of physical artifacts and intangible attributes of a group or society that is inherited from past generations. Heritage is a product of selection by society. Sadly, the more developed societies become, the greater the possibility of relinquishing the essence of culture. And this has been the case with St. Lucia's Two Flower Festivals. Now, relegated to rural communities which are struggling to pass on the mantle to a younger, less interested generation. The United Nations designated 2012 as the year of cooperatives and charged them with preserving indigenous culture. The Library Cooperative Credit Union heeded the call and injected financial fertilizer and extension support into the flower festivals. But how many St. Lucians know the full history, story, and cultural significance of our two flower festivals? How many know why the intense rivalry from slavery days until today? How many know the similarities and differences between La Marguerite and La Rose? And what, if anything, has central government done to preserve and expand the flower festivals? In this episode, we dissect the petals of the La Marguerite flower. The Chateaux sing some tunes. The Archbishop conducts a coronation ceremony. We go to church with a bunch of students and we leave the roses to fight for dumplings. In untold stories, La Marguerite, a class above the rest. recognize this flower? What is the connection between this unassuming bud and the cultural identity of the St. Lucian people? The Margaret a small magenta color globe flower was selected over two centuries ago as the symbolic representation of the African slaves who stage a parody of elaborate pageantry reminiscent of the European court, which later would be coined the La Marguerite Festival or La Marguerite. The African slaves divided themselves into two flower factions, the Roses and the Margarets, much to the displeasure of the colonial masters. The then procurer de Roy or prosecutor urged that this secret society of slaves should be prohibited since it distracted them from their work and created a sense of identity within them that could have dangerous consequences. However, even under the threat of severe beatings, punishments, and even arrest, the slaves persisted with their festivals and Sunday dances, even selecting a king and other officials and inciting participants to contribute small sums of money for the benefit of the flower society. Princess Phoebe and her flower bird. Rather than succumb to the repression of the politically oppressive system, the flower festivals thrived. In fact, by the 1840s, La Rose and La Marguerite were so influential that everyone in society held allegiance to one group or another, and the rivalry was intense. So intense that the laboring population was split into rival camps to the point where laborers from the Anskanot and Fordor estates resigned their employment and moved to the neighboring Richfoy estate 
reportedly because the latter was a La Rose stronghold. This sense of rivalry remains at the core of the La Marguerite Festival to this very day. I remember there was a guy who had a shop who actually said all are welcome except Margaret. He actually had that and he was serious. See, sir, we say Margaret, if you have been a good, if you have well, but I've said those were the days, my friend. That's the adversity, I don't think it will continue. We need the adversary. Each society has a patron saint on whose feast day the Guan Fet or festival is celebrated. For the Roses, it is the feast of Saint Rose de Lima on the 30th of August. And for the Margarets, it is that of St. Margaret Anne Alacoc, held on the 17th of October annually. History has it that St. Margaret Mary Alacoc was a French Roman Catholic visitation nun and mystic who was greatly recognized for her devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. As a child, she was confined to her bed for four years with rheumatic fever. However, after making a vow to the Blessed Virgin Mary to consecrate her to religious life, Margaret instantly returned to perfect health. In keeping with her vow, she later became a nun and spent the rest of her life sharing the wonders of Jesus' love, revealed to her in her visions with the whole world. Given the sanctified girl's name coincided with the virtuous Margaret Flower, Highland celebrants adopted her as the patron saint of the Margaret Society, and the feast day was created in her honor. <laughs> The rivalry between the La Marguerite and La Rose Society has existed for centuries and stems primarily from the many differences between them. Although both flower societies commenced around the same time frame, the La Rose could boast of having Saint Rose de Lima, the first saint of the New World, and the patron saint of La Rose since 1671, whereas the traditions of La Rose were accurate. The La Marguerite was questionable. St. Margaret Mary Alacoc, the patron saint of the La Marguerite Society, was only beatified in 1864, which left many to question whether they had another patron saint before that time period. Some are of the view that the actual patron saint of the La Marguerite Society is St. Margaret Mary of Scotland, whose feast celebration is in the month of June. In fact, very old members of the La Marguerite Society remember that their feast was celebrated during that time period. This lack of certainty gave room to much ridicule by the Rose Society, further perpetuating the divide. <laughs> The Roses pledged their allegiance to the Rose Flower, while the Margarets hailed the Margaret Flower as the most beautiful flower as evident in their many songs and ballets. They say it's Anpatushi and Fair Margaret, but it's supposed to be Anpatushi and Fair La was. Because that is our song that was stolen, eh? The La Rose stole that song. Because really? Margaret does not have any prickles. Uh -huh. It's the La Rose that has prickles, prickles. Right. So this is our song. Oh, and it was stolen. The La Rose stole that song from us. Greedy ducky had the coat of 
sau vin ve la de e domre șudi ale mona chini o la idee tut sau pe tan tut sau pe we la osca ca fa și la osca cu toaie se le oad lu chi ca fa și gridi da chi hadi cu tot soti hadi sau vin cea și de e domnul la os de pe aia nu dia va ca și ce li mă di ba un va ca de aia Belles are special songs sung by the chantuel or lead singer of the group, usually a woman who sustains the spirit and tenor of the session, be it at the séance, grand fête, or festival day processional. These songs are usually composed by the chantuel and are designed to not only proclaim the virtue of the Margaret flower, but to ridicule their rival group as well. What use is an umbrella when there is no rain? Many financial institutions claim to be there in times of plenty. But what have they done of late? They have proposed moratoriums, but in practice saddled you with compounded interest. Many have been reluctant to defer repayments, and now some have even reduced an interest earned on your savings accounts, just when you need your earnings the most. Thankfully, I don't have that problem. I am a member of the Library Credit Union and they are there with me, rain or shine. They now offer unprecedented interest rates on loans and hassle-free debt management solutions because they're not for profit. They are for people. The Library Cooperative Credit Union. We're not a bank, we're better. Over 138 years, we've had your back. From home contents to medical, auto to business continuity. GTM Insurance. Sound, solid, and reliable. Here's to the stylish ones, the soccer ones, the pooling ones, and the beach bums. The ones who disregard the status quo and the technologically advanced ones. For those who pay less, and demand more. For those who want this, that, and everything in between, the Tivoli. Starting at only $599 per month duty free. For the first responders, our doctors, nurses, firefighters, and police officers who need a test drive, call M Motors today. Telephone 451-4269. Loving you is easy cause you're beautiful And everything that I do
Lucelect's Rodney Bay office is now open, but we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285 6796, 285 7859, 285 3593, or 285 3329. Or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457 4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucilec.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk in service. Lucilec encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. Yes, I just look at the laros and I do my own song. Just look at them and I make my own song. So when they see me, they are afraid. Why are you not going to ask no? That's what they say. la Okay, me pour un dachima soufouye et dit moi. Bah, dit. Moi, les marques, c'est ça, le bain, quand j'ai poussé, moi, dis-moi ça. Bah, ça fait ça, bah, pièce, nous, bon, non. Où ça, moi, c'est ma vie, qui m'a nié, moi, ça, il chante, la rose, bah, ou, bien, mais, les mots passés, moi, là, oui, pour y faire moins honte, puis y'a dit bagaille. Et les marques, moi, je voulais là, j'en ça. Mais <coughs> Je me suis la je me suis dit, la rose, tout le monde. Je me dit, je ne suis pas la rose, comme toujours, je ne suis pas aimé la rose. Quittez-moi d'où ça, je ne suis pas la rose, toi tu as ouïe, je ne suis la rose. <coughs> <laughs> In many instances, the La Marguerites have been known to send spies into the Roses gatherings to obtain information that would later form the satire for their songs. During the festivals, the Marguerites' verbal ridicule or mépris of their rival groups sometimes provoked hatred, which gave rise to dissension and even violence. These feuds were not just a form of hooliganism, in support of one flower or patron saint or another, they also reflected the difference in social outlook. We are more organized in the way we do our business. We have our food, we share our food. We don't fight for food, we don't quarrel for food. <laughs> <laughs> 
We don't have movie mess. Some of the Laros have movie mess. When they're doing their little festival, they're getting drunk. We're getting drunk. We know how to control ourselves. You know? They're getting drunk. And they're not kind of dancing, dancing with them. <laughs> dancing, whining. We dancing, we dancing in style. The comparison is like night and day. You go to one of their festival, one of their festivals, and you come to ours, and it's like okay, you see the differences. Um, I'm sure some of um, the other members may have alluded to it. There's all the fighting for the food, the brash, loud, insensitive, they vago, they according to my auntie, kind of like that. that. But we have this more principled approach to the whole thing. We, we want to make sure, yes, we sing, we dance, we enjoy ourselves, but with a level of discipline, a level of um, class. When you look at the Margaret, um festivals, you know, it's more polished, more, whereas with the La Rose, you know, you get the Lady thing and whatnot. The, the Margaret Society, they're the exact opposite. Um, and so, maybe with my personality, I, I prefer to be a lion to them. With the Laros, they have their Dombuy Laros. You know, which they do after. But with the Margaret, you know, we have a formal lunch or dinner. The Lawrence say, Odni Dombu. Shake Dombu, yeah. I should say about the Dombu, you know. You can't say you can't let me walk away. Why not let me? You can't say you can't let me. You can't say you can't let me. The Margarets are generally considered to be more culturally grounded and elite of the two flower societies. They are often described as socially reserved, devoted Catholics and serious parents who are adamant about ensuring that their children receive a solid and conventional education in the traditions of Margaret. In general, the La Marguerite members could be said to belong to the middle to upper classes of St. Lucian society. The Roses, on the other hand, were composed primarily of the laboring class and domestic servants. They actually built their reputation by their dramatic performances in speech, playing, dancing, singing and drinking, whereas the Magris focused more on discipline, tradition and the spirit of camaraderie. At La Rose meetings, also known as seances, held on Saturdays, all sorts of spontaneous activities could take place, but at a La Marguerite séance held on Sundays, members sought to structure the events and preferred events to unfold more calmly and with a greater level of decorum. Many of the people who are part of the La Marguerite Society hail from a long lineage of Marguerite followers. Others were captivated by the colors, the song, the dressing and dancing as children, or as adults when they accompanied friends and relatives to seances or the guanfet. I was in love with the, the flower actually and the songs and that's what prompted me to join the Marguerite group. <laughs> My mother was a chanteur for La Rose and I used to hear her singing in the house. I never write down any song. I don't know how it stayed in my head. <laughs> and then I used to go to the, the seance. I mean, our Margaret seance. I didn't really, I said, if I know the songs, why can't I sing one day? And so I intend to go sing. Mm -hmm. 
Similar to that of La Rose, the characters within the La Marguerite Festival are hierarchically structured to illustrate the colonial society with the king and queen as the head, followed by other dignitaries, social functionaries, and ending with people of lower economic standing. Unlike the roses, however, there is no set structure in selecting the royal family. These roles are assigned based on interest, invitation, or socio-economic standing. By the age of 18, there was this gentleman in the village um, who was the king at the time. And he, um, well, he was ill and he wanted to sort of retire from the whole thing. So he asked his wife, Miss Tipops, to ask me if I would, if I would be um, the king after him. I agreed and then there was this big old coronation and well, all pretend of course and from then I've been a king and I'm still a king to this day because a king doesn't abdicate unless he has risen to. Upon selection, the royal family as well as the magistrate are sworn into office in a coronation ceremony where they pledge their loyalty to the Margaret Society. I, Marilyn John Mark Markey, Chief Justice of the Library La Marguerite Society, together with your humble servants, will be faithful and true to you, our King and Queen, your heirs and successors, and cultural traditions. So help me, Saint Marguerite. Vive La Marguerite. Do you accept the responsibility of trading Princess Christine in the practice of the La Marguerite Society in accordance with his respective rules and customs? I solemnly promise to do so. Do you promise to bring her up to emulate the virtues and dignity of St. Margaret? I solemnly promise to do so. Then I admonish you to speak to Christine. Tell her stories of St. Margaret and the beauty of the Margaret Festival. Teach her Margaret songs and help her to grow and flourish into the person that God has called her to be. Once these roles are adopted, their influence extends beyond the contours of the festival into real life, some maintaining the position for several years. When we return, a child beats a drum, a girl shakes a shak shak, and later, the Margarets go to church. For over 40 years, we've been a part of the financial landscape. From fishers to farmers, funding home improvements, construction, education, and of course, securing that little piece of paradise. We are committed to funding sustainable livelihoods in agriculture, financing your next set of wheels and debt consolidation, all guided by in-house financial counseling. Why? Because to others, you are risk. To us, you are family. The Library Cooperative Credit Union. We're not a bank, we're better. I watched him on the bed, knowing a man who has worked his entire life, can't afford the cost of his surgery or medication. Mom and I must sell barbecue tickets to help save his life. For less than $4 a day, the cost of a packet of gum, my dad could have been airlifted to get treatment. Some adults can be so insensitive with their lack of foresight. Now, mom and I either have to watch him wither away or sell a whole lot more barbecue. Why? Because one person didn't care enough to plan. GTM Medical Insurance. Less than $4 a day for the greatest peace of mind anyone could ask for. Call us today, 458-6300. Here's to the stylish ones, the soccer ones, the pooling ones, and the beach bums. 
the ones who disregard the status quo and the technologically advanced ones. For those who pay less and demand more. For those who want this, that, and everything in between, the Tivoli. Starting at only $599 per month duty free. For the first responders, of doctors, nurses, firefighters, and police officers who need a test drive. Call M Motors today. Telephone 451-4269. Over the years, Mother Nature has tested us. The winds have come, the showers have drenched, and for a while rebuilding was daunting. But we are St. Lucians, we regroup, and prepare for Mother Nature's inevitable assault. Today's pandemic will again test our resolve. But if we all follow the guidelines and take precaution, we will get through this together, apart. During these tough times, the toughest team of insurers are here to serve. One click, one call, and one client at a time. Mirage Insurance Agency. Yesterday's strength, today's commitment, tomorrow, together. Mirage Insurance Agency, an authorized agent of GTM Group of Insurance Companies. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. For over 40 years, we've been a part of the financial landscape. From fishers to farmers, funding home improvements, construction, education, and of course, securing that little piece of paradise. We are committed to funding sustainable livelihoods in agriculture, financing your next set of wheels and debt consolidation, all guided by in-house financial counseling. Why? Because to others, you are risk. To us, you are family. The Library Cooperative Credit Union. We're not a bank, we're better. Working behind the scenes is the Mama or Papa Magritte, a central character unique to the Magritte Festival. The members with these roles are usually the group leaders as they steer the society and festival throughout the year, handling the financial and organizational business of the flower group. King more or less um, helps to keep order and um, gives um, the Mama Magritte support. What as the organizer, she has a lot of things to do, and my role is more or less to get people to toe the line, to follow, to um, keep to their roles, do what they are supposed to do. And I'm also supposed to assist in sometimes um, procuring funds and that kind of thing. So the magistrate and police officers ensure that law and order is maintained at every gathering and misdemeanors are fined as a means of raising funds for the group's activities. <laughs> Yeah. 
Other social functionaries such as doctors, lawyers, and the clerical hierarchy dramatized their rules in grand style during the street parade on the day of the Guan Fet. The element of role performance or masquerading is at the core of the La Marguerite Festival and much time, effort and finances are devoted to ensuring that all preparations are in order for the grand day, from decorating the hall and arranging costumes to sourcing musicians and preparation of the great feast. Like the roses, preparations for the La Marguerite Festival starts months before the actual feast day on October 17th. In fact, as a form of courtesy to the Roses, the Marguerite celebration only commences after the Roses have completed their Guan Fet on August 30th. This may be partly due to the dual membership and participation of many Roses in the Marguerite Society. If you attend the seance, you would be surprised to find some of the very same people who are La Rose. When it comes to Marguerite, they are also a Marguerite, you know? But not me. I am a Margaret. I am not a Rose. I may attend to, you know, help them in their fundraising, but to attend their seances. During the preparation period, the Margarets gather at a community hall, particularly on weekends, to hold seances, which are singing and dancing sessions. These seances are also used to rehearse songs and raise funds for the grand performance on the feast day. The songs and dance envelop all ages. Non-members are welcome to attend the seances as long as they do not disturb the proceedings. If members or non-society members portray behaviors such as disrupting the meetings or engaging in unacceptable dancing, they are detained by the police officers and brought before the judge who finds them. If they are unable to pay the set amount, they may gain assistance from other members. These payments and fines are means to raise funds to cover the expenses of the Guan Fet. On the actual day of the festival, all members of the Marguerite Society assemble dressed in the fineries of their respective robes, the royal family being the most elaborate and adorned in the colors blue, purple, white and green. Then they proceed to the church for a special service before hitting the streets for the culminating street masquerade in honor of their saint. After the parade, all roads lead back to the hall for their lavish feast. The relationship between the Flower Societies and the Church has not always been a pleasant one. Between 1840 and 1860, the Church enthusiastically embraced the Flower Societies since it was the money raised by them 
during their various seances that built and extended Catholic churches island-wide. In fact, there is scarcely a parish on island that doesn't owe the erection of its church wholly or in part to the support and funding of the flower societies. However, after nearly 20 years of fetting and feuding in the name of La Rose and La Marguerite, Monsignor Etheldridge, the apostolic administrator of the Port of Spain with jurisdiction over St. Lucia, judged that the Flower Society's extravagance, quarreling and rioting had gone too far. So, he excommunicated them both in 1860. Members of the Catholic faith were forbidden from joining or remaining in them. Regardless of this, the flower societies remained active and over time, the once violent rivalry which existed between the Margarets and the Roses declined into a more amicable one. A new wave of nationalism and cultural awareness in St. Lucia deemed the flower festivals like La Marguerite unique to St. Lucian culture and a core national identity. As a result, the relationship between the church and the flower societies was fully restored and the church renewed its efforts to work more closely with the Marguerite congregation, providing them with a date and venue to hold their celebrations as well as directives that foster a deeper sense of unity amongst the societies. With the erosion of time, the number of Margaret groups has significantly decreased and today it is relegated to the confines of rural communities. The Margaret's point to the culprit. I would lay the blame Holy and squarely at the foot of the Cultural Development Foundation. To me, they are the ones who, you know, that should be their way of promoting its part of culture. It should be their way of promoting that art form. Unfortunately, this has not happened. does here in putting together the Gwan Fet and other little things. But I find the culture is, the groups are treated as a convenient something. When it is convenient to use them, they use them. During the year, there should be other opportunities given to both groups to market it. Coming up, the invasion of Rodney Bay, a credit union saves the day, and CDF sings a familiar tune. The bank, they're better. Like every other business person, I was worried when the pandemic started. My sales dropped by 70%. No school, curfew, and social distancing meant less gas and tires. And that's my core business. I didn't lay off my staff, and I still had all my expenses to cover. Before my struggles really started, the general manager of my credit union came to see me. He offered me a line of credit, which allowed me to stock up and stay afloat even during this difficult time. I had been dealing with traditional banks for a long time, but making that move to the Library Credit Union was the best business decision I ever made. It's about people helping people. Because they're not a bank, they're better. Here's to the stylish ones, the soccer ones, the pooling ones, and the beach bums, the ones who disregard the status quo, and the technologically advanced ones, for those who pay less and demand more, for those who want this, that, and everything in between, the Tivoli, 
starting at only $599 per month duty free. For the first responders, our doctors, nurses, firefighters, and police officers who need a test drive, call M Motors today. Telephone 451 4269. Life is a series of triumphs and trials. The circle of life has all the usual certainties and, of course, the unpredictable. Just one can affect you and your loved ones. Sadly, many fail to prepare for the unforeseen. Thankfully, we've been here for over 138 years, helping you plan and recover. We offer peace of mind at that critical moment. GTM Insurance, sound, solid, and reliable. Call us today at 458-6300 or log on to gtminsurance.net. Over the years, Mother Nature has tested us. The winds have come, the showers have drenched, and for a while rebuilding was daunting. But we are St. Lucians, we regroup, and prepare for Mother Nature's inevitable assault. Today's pandemic will again test our resolve, but if we all follow the guidelines and take precaution, we will get through this together, apart. During these tough times, the toughest team of insurers are here to serve, one click, one call, and one client at a time. Mirage Insurance Agency, yesterday's strength, today's commitment, tomorrow, Together, Mirage Insurance Agency, an authorized agent of GTM Group of Insurance Companies. Lou Select's Rodney Bay office is now open, but we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285 6796, 285 7859, 285 3593 or 285-3329 or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457-4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucilec.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk-in service. Lucilec encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. The government, through the Cultural Development Foundation, provides an annual subvention to the societies to defer some of the costs in organizing the festivals. And I want to say especially again to CDF, Kite Margaret Laguye, Kite Kiltino, West Viva, etc. However, despite the attempts of recent governments and cultural institutions within society to revive the flower societies, their biggest challenge remain that of continuity. This is where CDF comes in. We want to ensure that we do training, which of course is our mandate, to in group dynamics. So the older persons in the festival understand that it's a festival, you love it, but it's not yours to keep. It's not yours to go to the great beyond with. It is yours to pass on, to ensure that the work that you did carries on. The CDF also initiated the celebration of the La Marguerite Festival in schools and to revitalize interest in the flower festivals in the main urban district, the Guan Seance and Guan Spectacle, which represents an amalgamation of all the various groups in a unified seance, is staged in Rodney Bay. On the Guan Fet Day, we assist with the logistical needs. We ensure that we, we organize with the church services with them. We ensure that um, we create that sort of relationship with the CDF that 
they don't think that they're doing it alone, that an agency is behind them, ensuring that we allow or create that platform to allow the festival to thrive and to continue on. Many Margarets lament their inability to attract and keep the youth even as their older members are becoming frail and inactive. The young people actually don't want to join the, the, the Margaret group. It's the older folk. They think it's grassroots people business, not for the young generation. And so you find it difficult for the young people to join the group. But actually, I was very instrumental in getting quite a number of young persons joining the group. And most of them are still Effort there. To preserve them, to pass them on from generation to generation. At the start of 2000, there was a yearning amongst Caribbean nations to emerge from the weight of the colonial legacy and to establish a national identity with a particular focus on the resurgence of traditional or folk culture. Consequently, the savior of the La Marguerite Society would arrive in 2012 from a novel initiative of the United Nations, which was executed by a community credit union. At that time, I was the president of the Library Credit Union. And incidentally, that year, the 2012, it was International Year of Cooperative. The United Nations had declared that year as the International Year of Cooperatives. And cooperatives globally were challenged to establish legacy projects. And so we decided, well, you know what, the festivals, the flower festivals in Library were sort of on their way out you know, not much life in them. And so let us take advantage of that and, you know, sort of revive them. And this is why from 2012 they were rebranded. So the La Rose Society became the Library Credit Union La Rose Group and the Marguerite Library Credit Union Marguerite Group. So in 2012, we went through the formal and for, I suppose, by way of education, it was one way of educating the populace. We got to see what um, an actual coronation was because we had a new king and queen and the chief justice was installed that year. So we had this um, formal ceremony at the library market. In 2014, um, we had a repertoire of songs, so there's a CD, again, by the Credit Union, a CD of La Rose and La Marguerite songs. 2015, we did a historical perspective of the La Marguerite Society. So we went back to find out who the queens, as far back as we could have gone, who were the queens, the kings, where were the different places in library where seances were held our shot and shot well, so we have this well documented. In 2016, we had a sort of um, ceremony, a formal ceremony to honor, because we recognized some of our members were, were aging, and um, we did citations, we honored eight of them. Additionally, the Library Cooperative Credit Union organized workshops on the flower festivals and other cultural forms for the youth, along with old society practitioners and new members during their annual summer camp. This has greatly helped revitalize interest in the group amongst the general public and especially the youth. The fertilization of the next generation of queens judges, magistrates, police officers, and nurse Margarets wear today's faces, excited at the pageantry of the festival, which they have unknowingly been handed. For decades, the talk of La Marguerite's death seemed imminent. But here, doctors, nurses, soldiers, Police officers, kings and queens have resuscitated cultural vigor into the new crop of members. And of course, with St. Margaret Mary Alacoque 
and the music of the Chatwells, the festival will forever remain an integral part of St. Lucian culture. Vive la Marguerite! The fool has never been told.